people were pressed very hard to say, look, if you're on the left, you must support the Soviet Union because it's endangered and it's encircled by fascism and so on. And you mustn't criticize it in public, even if you have your doubts. And he said, no, that, that would be stupid. That would be giving up the thing that makes me a radical in the first place, which is the right to think for myself. That was a lot harder to do now than it sounds again. The destabilizing of the idea of truth had come to him when he fought in the Spanish Civil War and saw the news reports in many of the papers, particularly the Stalinist papers, just bore no resemblance to what he'd seen. I think probably that Orwell's greatest achievement was to have been brave enough to say that it would be nice to think this, especially faced as we are with this deadly foe, but that what the communists think is not just a deadly illusion, in other words, a romantic but wrong idea, but it's a poisonous delusion. It is a parody of reality, it's a negation of reality, and it will end up being evil itself. Orwell was indeed opposed to all forms of tyranny, spending much of his life fighting against anti-democratic forces of both the left wing and the right. But he was also deeply concerned with how such ideologies proliferate. And one of his most profound insights was the importance that language plays in shaping our thoughts and opinions. The German, Russian, and Italian languages have all deteriorated in the last 10 or 15 years as a result of dictatorship. But if thought corrupts language, language can also corrupt thought. A bad usage can spread by tradition and imitation, even among people who should and do know better. In Newspeak, the whole notion of goodness and badness will be covered by six words. There's a new form of language called Newspeak, which is designed to limit the range of thought, to rewrite history and to rewrite reality. It's a beautiful thing, the destruction of words. War is peace. Freedom is slavery. Ignorance is strength. Labor camps are called joy camps. Political prisoners are detained and tortured in the Ministry of Love. This deliberate irony is an example of doublespeak, when words are used not to convey meaning, but to undermine it. Every record has been destroyed or falsified. Every book has been rewritten. Every picture has been repainted. Every statue and street and building has been renamed. Every date has been altered. And that process is continuing day by day and minute by minute. History has stopped. Nothing exists except an endless present in which the party is always right. The government of 1984's Oceania controls its people's actions and speech in some ways that are obvious. Their every move and word is watched and heard. And the threat of what happens to those who step out of line is always looming overhead. There will be no loyalty except loyalty to the party. But always, there will be the intoxication of power. There will be the thrill of victory, the sensation of trampling on an enemy who is helpless. If you want a picture of the future, imagine a boot stamping on a human face forever.